G'day fixers. Last month when I made this lovely clamping bench, halfway through construction, I noticed something pretty cool. Not by design, by sheer luck, it's pretty much exactly the length of half of my AccuCut XL. And it has a storage problem. Currently, it just leans up against the back wall and it's not too crash hot. I reckon, for my Mario the Woodfather's Spring Shop Storage Challenge, I'm gonna be able to incorporate it into the back of the workbench here. Let's see how we do it. No plans, completely by the seat of the pants, like all good workshop storage projects should be. Let's get cracking. Right, so the first challenge was to get the big bugger up on its side. Heavy now, but I did put some new wheels on. They're much better. I needed to enclose the sides, so I was adding a piece of bracing here, which unfortunately wasn't the same height, but luckily didn't block the dog holes, so the gap above it was important. I didn't have a rebating bit large enough to do this, so I used the attachment that came with the Makita router kit, put on a 19mm straight bit, and bumped into a few problems. It looks like I wouldn't be able to do this without pulling the bench apart. So I stored some of the sawdust in my shop back. And fortunately, no glue here. The pocket holes came out nice and easy, and a few little wiggles. I had both of the leg assemblies off, and that was going to give me a much easier access. However, I still had the slight problem that the piece I've added is not the same height. So I had to uh, make a quick adjustment there and eventually complete the rebate almost all the way around. Tiny dodgy bit of chisel work to finish it off. Now this is rather appropriate. That crappy looking piece of plywood is actually the top of the old bench which I tore apart when I built the clamping bench. And fortunately it was exactly the right size to give me two pieces to enclose the sides of the new bench. Setting up the new saw horse here and the straight edge guide allowed me to rip it up the guts. Very quick sand. And then I could mark off the corners because I wasn't going to square them up. I'd rather round them off. Quickly set up my crappy angle grinder disc sander. And with a fresh piece of 80 grit on there, I quickly had it fitting nicely. Now for the main event, fitting in the tracks. You can see the plan here, I'd already cut one of them. I needed four rebates into the side of the legs, which were going to allow the 1.2 meter long or four foot AccuCut track to span basically the whole width of the workbench. So it wouldn't stick out the other side, I just quickly jammed in with a few brad nails, these little stop bumpers. Then I needed to cut a couple of reliefs for the track to slide through those new side panels. Those panels are important though, you'll see why in a minute. Once I was happy with the fit, again the brad nailer just comes out, no glue, tacked it in place. This will also help add some strength to the bench, stop it from racking a little. I quickly routed out those pieces to uh, make a cover cap to stop the end of the tracks getting bashed. Right, let's start the actual support rails. Forever with the bed slats, this one was quite twisted, but because I was ripping it up the guts, I was hoping I'd be able to manually force that twist out of it and use it for something useful. Jumped over to chop it down a length. And then the only tricky bit was to rebate out the channel that will support the track. Effectively, it's going to slide along this little dado. Got the vacuum there to suck out the sawdust as we push them through. And then gave it a bit of a quick sand using a block to force the old disc in there. Let the track slide nicely. Couple of pocket holes on either end to help me install the track. And a few shim spaces to put it in the right position. Screwing it to the old frame. Time for the first test. Crossing my fingers. 
In she goes, makes a clearance. A little bit of a tight fit in the end, but at the end of the day, it is a perfect snug little slidey action storage hidey hole. Try saying that, five tries fast. Well, almost. It was a tiny millimeter over, so I just put these bumpers on the end with the nail gun to help protect those, leaving the middle open to give easy access to pull the track out. Now for the party trick. This saw track comes with a lot of accessories. That's the starting block. I was going to put something over the front, but it was just a friction fit. For the moment, that's working. The cradle that you have to put your circular saw into was the next awkward shaped object that I wanted to store on here. I basically wanted all of the AccuCut track accessories and all of the bench clamp accessories to be hiding in these spaces because that way they had a permanent home and they're all really awkward shapes. So this solution doesn't take up any more workshop space, but allows me to put them not only somewhere safe, but also within easy reach of when I'm going to use them. The clamping mitch coming in well handy here as I chop down an old broom handle to make a couple of, well, what do you call them, dowels, hooks, something along those lines. Tiny bit of chisel action. I like using the clamping bench to improve the clamping bench. These bench clamps are kind of hard to hang up on a traditional clamp rack, so giving them a home under the bench made a lot of sense. So brilliant camera angle here as I screw in magically the hook from behind, and that's where those three inch ones will live. I did the same for the six inch on the other end. The last thing I wanted to add it on was a home for the clamping plates. These can be used on the bench vise or on the bench clamp track. Some crude jigsaw action, bit of a file down. And I didn't quite get it right the first time. So uh, let's just use the drill as an end mill and remount that hole a little bit bigger so they'll all fit nicely. Screw that one down and we're pretty much done. Oh, forgot about the bench dogs. These are on a tiny slight angle just with a 19mm spade bit. They'll live there nice and snug out of the way. So this is how it's all going to work. When the bench is set up and I need to break out the track saw to cut down some sheep goods, out she slides, put in the starting block. Now I didn't do it here because I'm lazy, but uh, traditionally you would want to screw your circular saw into the sliding track. Tiny bit of setup, but once you are set up, super quick to go. Then the clamp track system is great for holding down said piece of plywood, which is probably going to be bigger than this in the real world as well. And you get the picture. I can hang it over the side of the bench, line everything up, happy days. When you're all said and done, slide the blue bits and the clamps back onto the storage system and the whole thing can roll away against the wall and I can still fit the car in the garage. Thanks Mario for hosting a, another awesome Aussie Makers Challenge for Spring 2021. Don't forget to search on YouTube hashtag Spring Shop Storage to find the entire playlist and I will link it in the description below. While it may not come in useful for many people, I hope it does give you a few ideas for underbench storage. And after watching this, why don't you go check out the previous video, which was building the actual clamping bench. It's one of my favorite projects of 2021. A big thanks to my channel members, and I'll catch you on the next one.